This is the fastest male lead I've ever seen to darken. The man was forcibly summoned to the other world even if he is still the most useless a trainee. It's hard for him to muster up the courage to stand up for the goddess but the next second he's pushed from behind. And the worst is yet to come. Not only did he fall into the depths of the demonic attack even his arm was eaten by a demonic beast. After all these sad encounters he decided to stand up. He swore that he would eat all the magical beasts to avenge the loss of his arm. This time he will become the strongest person in the world with his ordinary profession. The boy who is being bullied is called Nan Yanshir. The boy is being bullied and he is the favorite of Kawari the goddess of the world. Because of this he is also jealous of a lot of people. He was used to this kind of life. But that day a strange spell suddenly appeared in the classroom. In the next second everyone traveled to the other world. And the reason they were summoned was actually to save the world and defeat the demons. And the reason they were summoned was to save the world and defeat the demon clan. Only if they want to use this power they have to go through strict training. The knight commander sends them a cell phone. Through the panel on it they can then check their vocation and skill attributes. And based on these they were categorized into combat and non-combat faculties. Yakuma is a swordsman, Sakagami is a boxer, Tanuga is a braver, and Kaori is a healer. Seeing this the male lead also excitedly opens the panel. But he didn't realize that even in the other world he was just an obscure alchemist. Not surprisingly he was ridiculed by his classmates. Even the teacher who was kind enough to comfort him became cold. The teacher was usually not very nice. This made him lose face. In order to prove his worth he decided to follow the large group to start the road of exploration of the labyrinth group. But as soon as he entered the labyrinth room he was almost grabbed by a huge rat. Fortunately Tenno who is a brave man stepped in just in time to save him. He sat on the floor in a state of disarray. Daisuke begins to taunt him calling him a loser who only drags his feet. Despite this Banana Kaori still cares for him and comforts him. This makes Daisuke feel very upset. However the crowd's attention was soon drawn to a rock wall that Tenuga had broken. The rock wall shone with an emerald green light. Even the goddess Kaori thought that the oars were beautiful. In order to please the goddess Daisuke defied the knight commander. He tried to pocket these mysterious oars. The result was a flash of demonic light. The crowd was suddenly transported en masse to the 65th floor of the labyrinth. After that a bunch of skeletal soldiers appeared in front of them. On top of that there was a huge brute monster. It was obvious that this was a trap specially prepared for them. Along with the start of the battle the shouts of the students rang out. Kaori who couldn't retreat in time landed at the very back of the crowd. The knight commander released a defense spell and blocked in front of the crowd. But it was still hit by the brute bull and the defense array was shattered in an instant. Watching the goddess Kaori in danger the hero bravely stepped forward. He utilized the baker alchemist to generate stone pillars and block the brute bull's footsteps. The knight commander also took Kaori and grabbed the time to retreat. But with the prolonged magic output the hero soon couldn't hold on anymore. Well the knight commander commanded the crowd to form a human wall and launched a magic attack towards the brute bull. They were prepared to cover from a distance so that the male lead could evacuate the battlefield smoothly. But the magic torrent suddenly diverged and launched an attack towards the hero. The bridge suddenly shattered because it couldn't withstand the fierce attack. The hero and the bull fell into the endless abyss together. After falling into the bottom of the labyrinth the hero realized that he was still alive. But his stomach was indisputably hungry. It just so happens that there is a fat rabbit not far in front of him. There was no other way he decided to eat his fill first and then went to look for the exit. The result was that the white wolf demonic beast with a fierce face was killed by the rabbit right in front of him. Looking at the rabbit's kind gaze as it turned its head he was paralyzed with fear. The rabbit came to the hero with a single jump. The rabbit jumped to the front of the man and attacked him. The smoke cleared and the rabbit actually stopped. Unexpectedly behind her an even more powerful silver bear appeared. The speed of the magical beast was amazingly fast. Even the rabbit was so scared that it fled directly. But the silver bear just stretched out its claws and waved a sharp blade and beheaded the rabbit. Watching the silver bear enjoying the rabbit's corpse the hero had been a bit broken. Though he reacted quickly and turned to escape while the silver bear was feeding. But how could the silver bear let go of its prey so easily when it hadn't had enough to eat? Between them it made another sharp wind blade chopping attack and the hero's left arm was sliced off. Watching his arm being eaten by the silver bear in one gulp the hero was terrified in his heart. He used his skills to hollow out the cave wall behind him. Then the male lead used these minerals to block the silver bear's footsteps. With the hero's disdainful efforts he finally hid in the cave behind him. Although he managed to survive he also passed out due to blood loss. Exhausted he was awakened by the sound of water dripping. This is actually the divine water crystals concentrated from the magic power recorded in the ancient books. The hero's wounds were healed by the magic of the divine water. But his mind was already full of holes and on the verge of collapse. 
His heart is filled with despair which has caused him pain. But the instinct to survive made him want to live. He thought back to the misery of his arrival in the other world. He was forcibly summoned to the other world. And while he was saving the world the hero was betrayed and backstabbed by his classmates. In the end he falls into the abyss of despair. That's not all he has to face the powerful magical beasts that will kill him nine times. He doesn't understand what he has done wrong. He was in extreme despair and from this moment on he started to completely blacken. He now has only one thought, and that is to go home alive. To this end no matter how powerful the magical beasts in front of him are he is going to kill them. Then he would eat them as food and fill his stomach. The crazy hero went so far as to use himself as bait. He attracts the white wolf demonic beasts and falls into the big pit trap he made. Then he will use the waste material to refine into generating crushed stones smashing the white wolf alive. He was so hungry that he directly ate the white wolf's flesh and blood. Even if the food is difficult to swallow as long as it can be fruitful he forced to swallow. But at that moment the hero felt something was wrong. He seemed to have eaten his stomach. And the cells in his body seemed to have completed their evolution at this moment. This scared him so much that he hurriedly drank a few mouthfuls of divine water to suppress the shock. Under the intense pain his hair actually turned white. In the desperate cry of heartbreaking pain the red blood cells in his body began to mutate. And his genetic chain also began to assimilate with the raging magic. When he bathed in the divine water and woke up again the once wasted alchemist was like a newborn. His various attribute indicators were greatly enhanced. And he also gained the exclusive skills of the white wolf that he had eaten. He not only has the skill of being able to freely manipulate magic power. Even he had the white wolf's natural skill purple lightning tangled thunder. This time he could at least not have to eat the blood and flesh of demons raw. Relying on his proficiency and the ability to characterize various types of ores he built a revolver out of hard ores. The hero used burnable ores as gunpowder to create bullets. He then made the bullets shoot faster by wrapping them around the mines. In a flash powerful magic filled the gun. He couldn't even beat a rabbit but he was able to kill it easily with just one shot. The hero who possessed the weapon had never been so confident. The gun also became his companion. He named it Dono. After eating the rabbit's flesh and blood the hero gained new skills. This time he gained the rabbit's instant transmission and moonwalk respectively. With great power he decided to take revenge on Silver Bear the culprit who ate his arm. He came to the Silver Bear with a crazy look on his face. The hero screamed at it that he was going to kill the Silver Bear for revenge and eat him as food. The bear roared and unleashed a full force attack on the hero. The hero moved back and dodged the attack. Then he turned and jumped using Moon Step to step into the air and dodged the sharp blades chopping attack again. The hero was in the air and fired several shots at the Silver Bear but unfortunately missed. Silver Bear backhanded him with a chopping blow. The dislodged Dano was doing spins in the air. The male who was on the ground threw a flash bang. The glare pierced the Silver Bear's eyes so much that he couldn't even open them. Then he confidently shot towards the Silver Bear. The shot hit the bear and its left hand fell to the ground. The hero crawled to the bear's left hand and chewed on it. At the same time he didn't forget to comment that the hero's meat was awful. Then he slowly took a few sips of the divine water. The silver bear was completely enraged by his actions and rushed up to tear the human in front of him apart. However this was exactly what he wanted. He quickly unleashed the whining thunder. The male used the principle of blood conducting electricity to paralyze the silver bear's body. Finally without hesitation he shot the silver bear in the center of its brow killing it completely. Next there was nothing left to stop him, and he was determined to go back. If there was any obstacle he would not hesitate to destroy it. Then he would simply devour it to gain more power. And right now he was gorging on the flesh and blood of his enemy the silver bear. Soon he ate the silver bear until all that was left was a blood stain all over the ground. Then he peeled off the complete bear skin and made a white fur coat out of it. The healing power of the divine water mixed with the magic in the silver bear's flesh and blood. This raised his alchemist level to seventeen as well. Next he decided to continue exploring the bottom of the labyrinth and find his way back. In the deep bottomless second floor of the labyrinth the hero groped his way through the darkness. He walked into an open area and lit up an energy lamp made of ore. Then a huge petrified magic lizard climbed on the rock wall not far away from him. When the lizard opened its eyes and looked at him the lamp in his hand rapidly petrified and shattered. Even his severed arm without his left hand also appeared to petrify. The good thing was that the hero had the almighty divine water to purify the toxins he didn't panic at all. He hurriedly drank a few mouthfuls of divine water to replenish his energy and prepare for battle. The de demon lizard slowly crawled in the darkness ready to enjoy its spoils. However the hero suddenly fired a flash bang at the demon lizard directly blinding the person. While no one cares if it's bright and shiny anymore the priority now is to hurry up and finish the enemy. The hero confidently shot at the fallen lizard. This time it must die. 
To survive the hero began his journey to become stronger. With the healing properties of the divine water and his unscrupulous and frantic fighting style he rides high. He eats while making himself stronger. Even he had the leisure to write down the characteristics of various magical creatures with a stone tablet. He no longer remembered how many levels he had cleared he just kept moving forward. Now in front of him was the mysterious gate that was arched by a huge bronze stone statue. For the male lead it was like Pandora's box both dangerous and exciting. He has no qualms about raising his gun and aiming it ahead. Because he's going inside to find the answer to his homecoming. All the enemies that appeared in front of him would become ghosts under his gun. Soon he came under the mysterious gate. When he saw the three dragons arranged on the door he was in trouble again. With no other choice the hero decided to use alchemy to forcefully break through the gate's defense. As a result he was met with a strong reflection. Suddenly the sound of stone breaking came from above his head. To his surprise the stone statues guarding the gate came to life. That turned out to be two huge one-eyed demons. The red-eyed giants were the first to break through their bonds and roared at him. But the hero didn't panic at all. He easily dodged the attacks of the giant feet. Then he utilized his excellent gun skills to kill the red-eyed giant with a single blow. The blue-eyed giant realized the strength of the human in front of him. The blue-eyed giant realized the strength of the human in front of him and closed its arms in front of its chest to defend itself against the bullets. The blue-eyed giant also fiercely launched an attack towards the hero. But he had already discovered the blue-eyed giant's fatal weakness. With the infinite bullets of the Donal pistol the hero frantically suppressed the firepower. The blue-eyed giant could only passively defend itself. The blue-eyed giant could only passively defend itself. Eventually the barrier was broken and the blue-eyed giant could not retreat. It tried to fight back but was killed by the hero's shot. It just fell down unwillingly. The hero pulled out the magic stone that opened the door from the bodies of the two giants. The magic stone was automatically attracted into the groove on the door. The ceremony began. The profound magic formation expanded forming a vortex of magic power. The surge of strong wind blew the hero's white hair. Then the door opened. The hero pushed open the door that had been dusty for years and walked in. All around him was a vast river of stars made up of billions of microscopic particles. Underneath the river of stars was a bright yellow square cube rotating alone. When in the middle of this vast river of stars the strange vines that were as green as life began to slowly recede. Eventually they converged on the bright yellow cube in the center. What appeared in front of the hero was the blonde girl whose limbs had been sealed. But I didn't expect that the male lead would have no interest in this blonde girl and turned around to leave. After all with the hero's brain think all know. This is sealed in the depths of the labyrinth of the blonde girl there must be a big problem. So despite the maiden's bitter plea he still righteously refused. But when the young girl said that she was not a bad person. When she was just betrayed the hero's closed heart seemed to be pierced by something hard. He retraced his steps back to the high platform. The male lead came to the maiden and tried to understand her tragic encounter. It turned out that the maiden was a powerful vampire whose bloodline had returned and was ageless. After being used by the kingdom's treacherous ministers who drained the maiden's value he abandoned her. Because of the maiden's immortality she was sealed away forever alone to this point. While returning vampires do have considerable power. But there is only one girl here who is pitiable and wants to be saved. After figuring all this out he no longer hesitated and directly used refinement to release his entire bodice magical power. The good thing is that now he has become several times stronger than before. After some twists and turns he finally broke the seal and successfully saved the girl. Exhausted he hurriedly pulled out the divine water and hurriedly replenished his magic power. The blonde girl held the hero's hand tightly wanting to feel the warmth that reassured her. She asked the male lead his name. And she asked the hero to give her a new name that abandons the past. Looking at the young girl in front of him looking at him with hope the hero instantly thought of the moon in his hometown. So he named her Moon. Because of her blonde hair and red pupils she looked like a bright moon that shone brightly in the darkness of the night it was as if he could instantly recognize the direction in the darkness. Moon happily jumped into the male lead's arms. This made the male lead still a bit lost for words. Then just then sharp spikes shot out of the darkness unexpectedly. The spikes were instantly stabbed into the male lead's back. The good thing is that the current him is no longer the weak and feeble waste of time that he was before. The male lead forced himself to endure the pain in his body so he first pulled out the divine water to treat his injuries. The heartbroken moon one by one pulled out the bloodied spikes on the male lead's back. This time it could really only be said that the male lead was careless. He looked up and saw that it was actually an iron-armored overlord. It was now staring at them intently. It seems that this should be the demonic organ that was left behind by the people who betrayed Moon. The male lead finally thoughtfully draped a white fur coat over Moon. Moon also climbed onto the male lead's back and held onto him tightly. Now it's time for them to fight back. The mutated king crab jumped down sending up a violent cloud of smoke. This picture is quite awesome. 
However, for the hero, it's a larger crab coming forward. Unexpectedly, this king crab's iron armor is really hard and solid. The male lead's attack didn't work at all. The crab tail behind it also releases toxin lasers corroding the surrounding combat environment. If you see the main man aiming his gun at nose to release spikes to suppress the firepower. This is really a tough opponent. But the hero has already seen through his weakness which is the fragile thin shell on his head. The hero threw out powerful light bullets to provoke him. His behavior completely angers the king crab. It wreaked havoc on the surroundings causing smoke and rocks to fly. The hero used the rabbit's instantaneous movement skill to dodge and launched a counterattack. Just when the hero failed to break the hard shell category on top of the king crab's head you came down from his back. She bit down on the hero's shoulder. The male lead was as if he had been hit by a huge change his hand with the gun hesitated but he still held you tightly. He used refinement to forcefully change the terrain and delay the king crab's attack. Moon also finally ate and drank enough and thanked the male lead for his hospitality. She was ready to strike. She pointed her finger to the sky and a magic storm bomb conveniently converged out of nowhere above the king crab's head. As she pressed down with her five fingers the king crab was directly pressed down to the ground unable to move. The king crab was crushed to the ground unable to move but this is not enough. Although Yuvu made this move was exhausted she hadn't finished the final curtain call for the king crab yet. Now was not the time for her to rest. The hero took the initiative to attract the intense attacks of the king crab dodging nimbly to avoid them. Moon seized the moment, and once again made a magic burst suppression. The male lead also leapt in the air and flew onto its back landing steadily. A few shots went down and tawny blood gushed out. The ferocious overlord giant crab in the end could only fall down powerlessly. Moon was curious as to why the hero didn't leave her to escape alone. The male lead said that he would not abandon a companion who was willing to give his life to him. Moon smiled happily after getting a satisfactory answer. The male lead actually started probing about you's age while eating the fatty crab meat. The result was that you looked at the male lead with exasperation and accused him of being really rude. After some small talk he gets serious and asks Moon about the way out. Moon tells him that this labyrinth was built by people who betrayed and rebelled against the god to escape at the the deepest part of the labyrinth you should be able to find your way back to the surface. The two of them are on an adventure to find a way out of the labyrinth. Moon asks questions like a curious baby wanting to know the hero's past. But after hearing about the hero's tragedy she still shed tears of sadness. On the contrary the male lead who climbed out of the abyss of pain was very calm about it. The process doesn't matter at all the result is that he survived. He has only one purpose now and that is to get out of the labyrinth and go back to his hometown on earth. The moon has lowered its head in defeat. She had been abandoned long ago, and was homeless. Seeing the depressed Moon the hero finally got the hang of it. He took the initiative to invite Moon to come back to Earth with him ready to give Moon a home over there. And on the other side of the Helixi Kingdom training grounds. The brave man Tian Jihi's level has reached a sizable 50. The hero's former classmates have also gone through rigorous training and have become stronger than ever. They will once again carry out the actual battle of the raid on the depths of the labyrinth. And at this moment the male lead was fleeing in a sorry state with you on his back. Behind them are countless mutated dinosaurs chasing them. The strangest thing is that the dinosaurs actually have a flower on their heads. Remembering the flower-picking dinosaurs they had seen a while ago he ventured a guess that they should have been parasitized. It seems they can only find the flower's body first and destroy it. Otherwise they would not be able to cope with the endless parasites. The male lead was still struggling to find where the strange flower body was hiding. Moon had already taken it upon herself to start savoring his delicious taste. She first took a small sip to the left side of the male lead's neck then another to the right side of his neck. Comparing the two sides it seemed that the left side was still a little better so she took another sip. The male lead was dumbfounded. What if you suck me dry again? However when you is so cute of course he can only choose to forgive her. The dinosaurs that were chasing them have also surrounded the area. He had no choice but to take you through the cracks in the rock to the other side. At the same time he didn't forget to use alchemy to generate rocks blocking the way for the dinosaurs to come in. The next step was to explore the well carefully with you. He was afraid that some danger would suddenly appear. Suddenly dark green robes slowly floated by. Soon they surrounded the male lead and you. The male lead hurriedly used alchemy to change the terrain and stop them from approaching. This should be the odd flower proper. They're getting ready to launch an attack on them. The hero turned his head to tell you to be careful but you was already hit. Her eyes changed. The next thing that happened was that moon was converging waves of light at the male lead coming at him violently and the weird little red flower had grown out of her head. Sure enough the dinosaur was being manipulated by the toxin in that dark green robe just now. The male lead's hand that raised the gun was still a bit hesitant. After all to the hero even if you was manipulated she was still you. But you was not ambiguous at all and through whatever skills she had at the male lead. 
The male lead could only passively dodge. The result was that his wound hit the green robe. His body froze for a moment, and a flower appeared above his head. After that green smoke rose from his entire body. Seeing the big picture the person hiding behind you couldn't walk out. This is actually an ugly humanoid flower demon. I didn't expect her to be so cautious and hide behind you to control her. She once again launched herself at the male lead. Only when she saw the parasitic flower growing out of the male lead's head did she relax into a hideous smile. But the male lead sneered. In the next second the flower growing on his head also wilted instantly. For the male lead who has eaten countless demonic creatures his body has long been impervious to all poisons. The infuriated flower demon manipulated the moon and attacked the male lead. The moon who can't bear to see the hero get hurt cries and begs the hero not to worry about himself and shoot her. And the flower demon actually did stop. She wanted to see what choice the hero would make. The hero's shot went through the flower on top of Yu's head and also chipped the flower waist's left hand. While the flower demon was still reacting from the pain the male lead rushed forward to make up for it. A round of incendiary bombs went down and directly burned the flower demon cleanly. The male lead didn't realize that behind him Yu had been scared to death. After all she was just talking I did not expect the hero really did not hesitate to shoot. Even though it was you who took the initiative to let you shoot you were about to graze someone's scalp. So it's your fault. But the hero and heroine actually said that it was just a minor issue and that they would be angry again soon. Moon is very angry. The scene changes and the hero who is eating cooked meat alone actually asks the vampire Moon if she wants to eat. As a result Moon was again intrigued by the male lead's blood. She wants it for dinner. After eating and drinking the two of them soon start the adventure of the labyrinth again. The hero and you finally arrived at the 100th floor of the labyrinth after a lot of hard work. The man who came to the 100th floor was more cautious than ever. After all according to the plot of the labyrinth strategy game there must be something here to appear. The fact is that the hero is not what he expected. At the corner of the stairs a strange and mysterious door just appeared in front of them. It seems that the answer to everything is hidden behind the door. Whether this is a great danger or an opportunity to escape they open the door to find out. They open the mysterious and weird door. What came into view was a field full of crystal clear stone pillars which was very beautiful. When they reached the end another door appeared. It seems that this is the end of the journey. Just as the hero and you were walking hand in hand the ringing scent of a magic formation appeared ahead of them. Sure enough it's not as simple as that. However the two of them who have already entrusted their lives to each other will never lose. The magic formation slowly unfolded. After releasing a strong flash what appeared in front of them was actually a monster with six colors. This should be the ultimate boss hidden on the 100th floor of the labyrinth. With a violent fling of its giant tail the red snake was the first to unleash a fireball attack. The hero and you hurriedly dodged. And right after that there was blue snake's eyes spit. Even the green snake came with a wind blade slash. However the male lead and you weren't scared at all. Under the tacit cooperation of the two the red blue and green snakes were knocked down one after another. Unexpectedly White Snake was also a recovery artist and actually healed their injuries. The goal was instantly clear. In that case they'll take care of White Snake first. The male lead and you shook off the red, blue and green snakes that were entangled. Moon reached mid-air and struck the White Snake with his full strength. This time it will definitely die. As a result the Yellow Snake actually opened its defense and blocked this fierce blow. White Snake is responsible for healing Yellow Snake is responsible for defense and the other snakes are responsible for attacking. This lineup is really a bit difficult to get. The man can only fight and retreat. While Moon was in the air storing up a big move it was interrupted by the Black Snake impact. The unguarded Moon was instantly close to Black Snake. Black Snake's eyes lit up and actually cast a charm on Moon. It creates illusions allowing Moon to see herself in the past when she was still sealed experiencing the despair of loneliness. That was the end of the hero turning away and leaving her alone. Moon broke down and screamed. Seeing the stricken and paralyzed you the black snake opened its huge mouth and tried to swallow it in one gulp. How could the hero let it succeed? He held you in his arms and retreated to a safe place then threw an incendiary bomb with his backhand. In an instant the opposite side of the sea is a sea of fire. The hero took the opportunity to delay the attack of the six snakes so that the white snake to heal them. The male lead took the opportunity to hurriedly check on you's condition. As soon as the almighty divine water was pulled out you quickly woke up. Looking at the male lead close at hand you reached out and stroked the male lead's face. It turned out that it was just a dream the hero did not abandon her. This is great. The man scratched his head as he looked at you who was a bit confused and flustered. He actually knelt down and gave you a kiss. Time seems to stand still in this moment only the two of them kissing sweetly. The next task for them is to defeat the giant snake and return to the earth back to their hometown. The moon was revitalized with three types of magic. 
She gives her all trying to cover the hero with the sniper rifle. They both want to end this battle. In a moment attacks of gale thunder ice rain and fireballs ravage the field. The six-headed serpent was hit and let out a miserable scream. Black Snake tried to do the same trick and confuse Moon again. But you just touched her lips recalling the feeling of the male lead kissing her and the charm stopped working. The male lead untied the black cloth binding and made a destructive strike in the air with Shura Jane. He destroys the three-headed serpent first. Then the male lead combined with Moon's thunder heavenly extermination directly ending all the big snakes in the field. Moon however was exhausted and collapsed to the ground. The male lead turned toward Moon. But what he never expected was that another silver snake king appeared behind him. And its target was actually at the moment Moon who had lost her ability to fight. The silver snake spat out a wave of green light and came at you. The hero could only use his body to block in front of you taking this one fierce attack. Only the silver serpent was spitting madly in the great hall where everything was silent and icy. When you woke up from her stupor she saw the make that was in front of her. The gun in his hand fell to the ground and shattered. Men also had a charred face and collapsed helplessly to the ground unconscious. Blood couldn't stop flowing from his back staining the ground red. Moon had long been exhausted and weak. But she drank the next few sips of divine water with no concern. After regaining her strength she came to the hero's side and checked his injuries. She picked up the male lead as soon as she could. But the enemy didn't even give them the slightest chance to catch their breath. The silver serpent delivered another fierce attack at them. Moon could only hold up a magic barrier and fight it off bitterly. But that wasn't all the silver serpent unleashed another destructive kuyu for an indiscriminate barrage. Moon carried the hero on her back dragging with difficulty escaping from the battlefield step by step. She took the male lead and hid in a relatively safe place. She tried to feed him divine water in order to ease her injuries. But the male lead was already without the strength to even swallow. Moon's heart was overwhelmed with anxiety. She could only drink the divine water herself before feeding the male lead bottle after bottle of divine water potions. Finally the waves of enemy attacks reached here. Looking at the silver serpent gradually approaching in front of her you made up her mind in her heart. This time it's her turn to protect the hero. Moon grabbed the hero's pistol and tried to let go. But she was swept away by the impact and fell to the ground. But she mustn't go down like this. Moon braced herself to avoid the impact. She was in mid-air and shot a strike that followed through on her beliefs managing to hit the silver snake in a vulnerable spot. However this completely enraged the monster. It roared and sent out a wave of destructive cyan light. It struck Moon's body so hard that it knocked her to the ground never to rise again. The gun was also sent flying a short distance away. She couldn't touch the gun that was used to run through her enemies and she couldn't save the hero she was trying to protect. Tears of sadness slid down from Yu's eyes. The monster however still hasn't let go of Moon. It plans to attack again. Moon closes her eyes in despair but in her heart she regrets that she couldn't save Ishii. The hero who is in the darkness of the unknown senses you who is crying. He opens his eyes and sees that Yu is still trying to move forward for himself. If this is the case how could he let someone important be taken away by a monster? How could he let Moon shed her tears? The hero's potential finally exploded. Once again he succeeded in saving you. The hero took you and easily dodged through the oncoming waves of destructive light. He lets Moon suck his blood to recover his strength and prepares to give the monster a final blow. The hero dodged the silver snake's attack and fired several shots at the ceiling making several notches. With that he leaps forward and throws a few grenades with precision jamming into the wall. Settling on the ground the hero shoots and detonates it. This was a return gift to the monster for daring to tease the moon. The massive boulder explodes and falls from the sky weighing down the silver serpent. The hero then uses the alchemy to generate a stone spike that runs through his body viciously. Moon had long been storing up her big move and unleashed a devastating blow. Everything was obliterated into nothingness under the terrifying pressure of the magic blast. The silver serpent let out an unwilling roar but it could only fall down powerlessly no longer alive. The silver serpent roared but could only fall helplessly no longer alive no matter how difficult the process was they finally defeated the monster and protected each other. The battle was ultimately won by the hero and you. When the hero wakes up again there is a naked you sleeping beside him who can't be woken up. To make sense of the situation the main character wakes up by firing a thunderbolt directly at you. The moon who was in a daze looked at the hero who woke up unharmed and jumped into his arms. Then she told her worries these days. It turns out that this is the place where those who rebelled against God's rule and fled from the country used to live. Moon took the unconscious male lead and opened the door to find this place. She gives the male lead a charm of divine water to heal his wounds while she herself falls asleep from exhaustion. The male lead says that he understands the reasoning but it's a bit wrong that he's not wearing any clothes isn't it? The male lead and you changed into the rebel clothes they found and walked out of the room. The sun was actually shining outside after a long time. They decided to explore a bit the rebel's past residence looking for an exit. 
Unexpectedly, they found the hot springs for bathing. Moon suggests that the two of them should join together, but the male lead decisively refuses. Moon also angrily thinks the male lead is too petty. They walk through the kitchen and up the steps to the room on the second floor. This was actually the sealed literature study and weapon storage room. The hero and you came back to the darkened third floor room. What appeared in front of them was the nameless Bone King sitting quietly on the king's table. The male lead walked into the core spell in the center of the room. At this moment countless unfamiliar memories also frantically flooded into his mind. Suddenly a strange man appeared on the nameless drum king. The hero could sense that the man in front of him didn't seem to have any malicious intent. So he also lowered the gun on his waist. The man's name is Oscar the builder of this big labyrinth. At the same time he was also the rebel that the hero and you had been looking for. However he was only able to leave them clues in the form of a holographic projection. Oscar was grateful that the hero in front of him was able to listen to all of his words. At the end he uttered the words may the free will be with you and return to nothingness. And in this moment the hero gains all the power and memories he left behind. He also learns the truth of this world. It turns out that it wasn't the so-called rebels who betrayed the gods but the gods who fell into madness. They want to be liberators. But what will become of this world has nothing to do with the hero at all. All he wants to do now is to take you back to her homeland on earth that's all. The same is true for you. She held on to the male lead's hand never letting go. Wherever there is a male lead that is where she will stay. The male lead who was made shy by use words changed the subject a bit sheepishly. He told you that he had learned a new magic called original magic. He could extend new items by giving minerals characteristics. To thank Oscar for his final gift of power the hero, and you bury his remains properly. They then find a way back to the ground in the office. However they need to use the spells on the ground and the power of Oscar's ring to do so. They learn from the ancient books that they could also obtain the original magic by clearing the other great labyrinths. Over the next few days the hero installs a mechanical body on himself. And he also puts a ruby eye in his blind right eye and then a handsome eye patch. He also created many modern weapons that do not exist in this world. Under use careful care the hero also became alive again. He can even eat something and almost choke to death it's just hilarious. Moon's reaction is really cute. The male lead also puts on the summoning ring which can be called a token of love on you. The ring is a symbol of love and the hero's power becomes even stronger. The hero and you embark on a new journey that may be called a pair of enemies by the world. Meanwhile a blue furred rabbit girl is climbing the wall to escape from the mutated dinosaurs. She arrives at the teleportation array that connects the main character and you to the outside world. Only to see a loud bang in the sky the male lead and you shined and landed smoothly. The invisible aura emanating from them scared the mutant dinosaurs so much that they turned around and ran away. The rabbit girl however seems to have finally waited for the person she wants to see she is very excited. The male lead and you who managed to return to the ground with great difficulty looked at each other fondly. They were about to make their next intimate move when a cloud of dust rose in the distance. It turned out to be the blue-haired rabbit girl who took the initiative to stick up. Unexpectedly the male lead was uninterested and turned around to leave directly letting the rabbit pounce. The rabbit refused to give up. She clung to the male lead's thigh and begged him to save her clan. She even went so far as to show her charms to the strong male lead Akira in front of the moon. The dinosaur who had just escaped came back and roared at them. How could the male lead stand this? He shot the dinosaurs in the face killing them instantly with his twin guns. He also hit the rabbit girl who was pestering him. In the end the hero can't resist the rabbit's pleas and is willing to hear her out. As a result the rabbit gratefully wipes her face with the hero's coat and gets punched again. The blue-haired rabbit is named Shay the daughter of the current rabbit clan leader. Somehow only Shay is gifted with magical powers that the rabbit people don't have. She has also acquired an inherent magic called futuristic. Shay is able to predict the short future to a certain extent. Shay's father led the clan to break away from the larger pack in order to protect Shay. They came here to settle in the Listen Canyon. As a result they are now in constant danger of being attacked and exterminated by demons. Shay's vision of the future is that the appearance of the hero will lead the rabbit tribe out of the predicament. However the hero is no longer the kind-hearted boy he used to be. He rejected her. Then he used his ring to summon a cool blue motorcycle. He was going to take you and drive away. After all whether the rabbit people clan is overthrown or exists it won't do the hero any good at all. Shia used the future as foretold the male lead and you to travel to the end of the sea of trees to raid the labyrinth. The maze is filled with a thick fog that never goes away so if they go and they will never come out. As a native of the sea of trees Shay promises to show them the way to the exit. The heroes are still a bit indifferent. But surprisingly you agrees. The giddy Shia happily pounces only to be frozen into ice by the moon. The rabbit people find the woods to hide from the demonic creatures hovering overhead. A cute little bunny hopping around finds fruit she can eat. 
They are the only ones who can eat the fruit but they have been discovered by the demons. The demon rushes towards her with its huge mouth open. Well it was a gunshot that saved her. It was Shay who came back with help from the hero and you. The hero was about to shoot out and finish off all the demons but Shay got in the way. With a bad smile he backhanded Shia and threw her straight up into the air to attract the attention of the demons. The hero simply shot out one shot to solve one. At the same time as he parked his car in a handsome and ethereal manner he caught Shay who was almost stunned with one hand. Then the hero casually dropped her on the ground. She returned to the pack with Shur and you and met her people. And with the arrival of the hero and moon the rabbit people will be led to the dawn of the dawn. The male lead and moon made a simple move to help the rabbit people with the life-threatening beasts. They lead them deeper into the dense forest to the territory of other subhuman races. After showing their great strength the other races had no choice but to accept them. The entire rabbit race cheered this was the first time they could sleep so peacefully since they were driven out it turns out that the only way to change everything about being weak is to get a strong power. She also decides at this time that she will follow the hero and moon on their journey. The next day the entire rabbit people clan petitioned the hero to teach them to become stronger. They really don't want to be so weak anymore. However the hero clearly overestimated the strength and nature of the rabbit people. The rabbit people are not only very fond of small and cute things. Even if they hurt a muddy groundhog the whole clan will be sad for a whole day. The rabbits are not only very fond of small and cute things but also hurt a clay groundhog and the whole clan will be sad for a whole day. The main character is so angry that he crushes their favorite flower with his foot. The hero forced these rabbits to make a choice. Whether they choose to fight for their lives to defeat the powerful magical beasts or to be eliminated by this cruel nature. Whether to kill or to be killed makes the devilish training unfold. And the forest erupts with a violent impact. This is actually Shia and you fighting. On one side is the, the rabbit race's gifted and monstrous girl Shay. On the other side is Moon a vampire who has lived for hundreds of years. Who will win? There are some twists and turns but Moon wins. She freezes Shay into a block of ice. But she's attack also worked she actually scratched Moon's little face. While you was a bit disconcerted she still admitted that Shay was physically strong. Even the male lead had to praise she's strength in front of you. Shay then took the opportunity to propose that she would follow the male lead as they embarked on a journey into the unknown. The male lead was puzzled and asked him why. Shay was so confused and asked why she said she liked the hero and wanted to be by his side. The two-horned rhinoceros that was being hunted was thrown to the ground and this was the first time that the two-horned rhinoceros had been hunted. And this was actually done independently by the kind-hearted rabbit people. The way they addressed the male lead has also changed from the previous submissive male lord to a strong boss. It seems that the male master's method is very successful. The strength of the rabbit people clan has increased a lot. The male lead and you were led by the rabbit people to the end of the sea of trees. There was a huge tree that withered when it was built but never died. Beneath the tree is a stone tablet that resembles the pattern of the labyrinth Oscar. When the hero puts his ancestral ring on it a mysterious message slowly emerges from underneath the monument. There are puzzling instructions written on it. They need to obtain four exhibits related to regeneration and to link these with magic and the closely related guiding signposts. Only then will they be able to find their way back. It seems the path to raiding the other mazes is inevitable. And the heroes packed with the rabbit people can only go so far. Now the time has come to part ways. The rabbit people now have the strength to dominate the sea of trees. But they were willing to follow the hero and repay his kindness. But they are willing to follow the male master and repay his kindness. He told them to cultivate themselves and become stronger. He will be useful to them one day. But Shia still wants to follow the hero on his journey and even you helps her plead for mercy. It turns out that you is keeping her promise to take Shay with her if she can hurt her. Seeing this the hero can only reluctantly agree. What awaits them will be a dangerous journey. The past can't be undone the future can be changed so let's desperately try to become stronger. With the rabbits in tow the hero continues to raid the labyrinth with you and Shia. So what kind of fun adventures are in store with the rabbits be sure to like and subscribe for the next installment and well find out next time.